Let me go to the next question though, and this is the Heritage Foundation partnering with us. Something you know very well about is the ESGs. Yes. Uh, these are unelected people in the boardroom trying to force a very leftist agenda onto this country. As president, how do you counter that? Mm -hmm. That it's now the corporate boardroom, it's not the elected office holders. How do you champion, you know, listen, we're about making a profit. We're not about yes. forcing a liberal leftist agenda on this culture. So I'll say a few things. First is I'm a big believer that not all solutions are delivered through the government, especially not through the federal government. So that's why in my most recent career journey before running for president, I founded a firm called Strive that's competing with BlackRock and State Street and Vanguard, offering alternative index funds and forms of investment that basically are the same kinds of investment vehicles offered by the pro ESG firms. But now your money isn't used to vote to, for example, even fund Planned Parenthood. Actually, a lot of that comes from corporate funding. That's not somebody else's money. That's our retirement money invested in those corporations used to fund left-wing organizations like Planned Parenthood or emissions caps or racial equity audits and so on. So I believe in market solutions, but there's a big government role in this. So the Biden administration, this is just one of many such rules, right? The Biden administration last year changed the rules for how retirement funds are invested in this country. The old rule used to be that it has to be based on profit maximization. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm, I'm well, so allergic to this rule. It's hey, gonna, well, yeah, it's gonna <laughs> I, can't even, I can't even get it out. It's such a bad rule for the Biden administration. It used to be profit maximization. Now, the rule that they changed it to at the Biden administration was to say that they can take into account, this is their words, not mine in the rules, collateral benefits other than investment return. They didn't want to leave it to the imagination about which collateral benefits they're talking about. So they said, including, at the top of the list is climate change. That's a rule change, it's a big deal. So it's done through the Department of Labor. And just to give you a sense of how this administration works. So in June, they propose a draft rule change. They think this is gonna be a big deal. So in the draft rule, it says that, okay, we're gonna propose this rule change, but you have to disclose it to the retiree, to the person who's 401k plan or retirement accounts invested. You have to disclose it to them if you're using these other factors. By the time the final rule got passed in November, they dropped the disclosure requirement behind closed doors. Now the Administrative Procedures Act says you have to do, you have to explain why you change a draft rule to the final rule. So they explained it. They said that the disclosure requirement would have a, again, their words, chilling effect on the use of ESG factors. That's a fancy way of saying if you tell people <laughs> that you're using their money to advance social and political agendas, they would say, I don't want you to use my money to advance those social and political agendas. So it was purposefully hidden. In this case, the Democrats in the Senate had good sense to vote along with the Republican House to overturn that rule by statute. Biden's first veto was vetoing that legislation. So that still remains the new Biden rule, the law of the land. Mm. And that's how they're getting it done through the back door, Bob, is a bank would not have as good of an ESG score I don't mean to make this land particularly at home, but I'm saying it to make a point, to provide financing for an expansion plan for a new building or a new campus you might want to build for the family leader. And that's not unique to the family leader. It's if you're a coal company, if you're a company that's involved in drilling for oil, if you're a company that has refused to adopt a NASDAQ-imposed diversity mandate on your board, that's how you get to Bud Light or to Target or to Coca-Cola behaving more like a super PAC than a soft drink manufacturer. It's invisibly using our own money to advance agendas that we would have never consented to with our own money. And though not, the government's not gonna be able to solve all of it, it requires market alternatives, and I've tried to do my part there, a big part of this is coming and being guided by the invisible hand of the federal government, not the market. So leadership does matter. Well, we say all the time, if you don't stand up now, you will be made to care. And yes. what they're doing is they are making you care. 